respiration in plants again totally 6 mark wherein one 5 mark question and one MCQ will be asked totally 6 marks. Lysosomes are not formed in the rough endoplasmic reticulum but some of the enzymes that are needed for the functioning of the ly lysosomes are formed in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Between the right and the left atria, there is a thin wall that separates both of these and it is called as the interatrial septum. So this statement is correct. Hello everyone, a warm welcome to the session on discussion regarding the model question paper for first PUC biology. I am Dr. Divya, biology faculty with the Ashram Pri University College, Temple of Excellence, Mysore. So in this session, let us learn about or let us discuss how to answer the questions that were asked in the model question paper for first PUC biology. So in this session, we will look into the blueprint and then we will look into the part A and part B of the model question paper and in the next session that is session 2 we will have a look at part C and part D. So talking about the blueprint, so the question paper is divided into four parts, part A, part B, part C and part D. In part A two mains are there in which in the first main multiple choice questions will be asked that is 15 multiple choice question will be asked therefore first main of part A carries a total of 15 marks wherein all the questions are compulsory and in part that is second main of part A it consists of five fill in the blanks question wherein each question carries one mark therefore it has a weightage of five marks in total and all the questions there also it is compulsory. Next in part B there is the third main. So in third main short answer that is two mark questions will be asked wherein four two marks question is the one that you have to answer out of the choices given. Therefore number of questions that are given is eight but in that four is the one that you need to answer. Therefore total will carry a total of 16 marks. Next in part C that is under that fourth main in the fourth main again short answer questions of three marks will be asked wherein eight short answer questions will be given out of which four you need to answer total is 24. Next under part D wherein fifth main consists of long answer that is five marks wherein any three five marks you have to answer totally 40 marks and in long answer again part D it is divided into section 1 and section 2, section 1 fifth main is there, section 2 sixth main is there. So here also long answer for 5 mark wherein 3 questions are given out of which 2 you need to answer which will carry therefore totally 15 marks. Total number of question given the question paper is 47 wherein all the 47 you will not have to answer because in part B, C and D options are there and totally the question paper is set for 115 marks but you will be writing it for 70 marks because choices are there therefore only you have to score 70 marks. Moving to the blueprint. So blueprint so it is the blueprint is given according to the chapters and what type of question should come from each chapter the same thing will be set in the exam question paper also. Say for example from some of the chapter one mark question is not there in the blueprint means it will not be asked but again in biology can't say sometimes they might ask so studying everything is also quite important. So here the living world wherein MCQs are not asked from the living world instead one two mark question will be asked. Next in the case of biological classification under this one MCQ will be asked one mark and one two mark question will be asked and one three mark question will be asked totally it carries four mark. Next in plant kingdom under this one MCQ will be asked one mark and one five mark question will be asked therefore totally it will carry six marks and animal kingdom one mark that is one MCQ will be asked five mark one will be asked and 
3 mark 1 question will be asked. Therefore, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Totally 9 marks. From morphology of flowering plants, it carries a total of 5 marks, wherein 2 1 mark MCQs will be asked. Therefore, 2 marks. For 2 marks, MCQs will come. 1 3 mark question will be asked. Therefore, totally 5 marks. Next, anatomy of flowering plants. 1 MCQ will be asked and 1 3 mark question will be asked. Therefore, totally 4 marks. Next, from structural organization in animals. 1 here and 1 2 mark. Therefore, totally 3 mark. From cell the unit of life. Here, it is the chapter that carries the highest mark if you look into here MCQs will not be asked but from this particular chapter one three mark can be asked. So from chapter eight that is cell the unit of life it has so it carries a lot of mark that is 12 marks wherein one two mark will be asked one five mark again one more. 5 marks that is 2 5 marks will be asked therefore 5 twos are 10 plus one more question for 2 mark 12 it carries a weightage of 12 marks next biomolecules no mcqs from this here so from biomolecules one mcq will be asked therefore one mark here then one three mark question will be asked and one two mark question will be asked therefore it will carry a total of six marks next cell cycle and cell division here, two MCQs will be asked, that is for one mark each, therefore two marks. Then one short answer, here again one more MCQ will be asked, therefore totally three MCQ questions will come from which chapter? Cell cycle and cell division. And one three mark question is asked. Next, photosynthesis in higher plants, it is a total of six mark, wherein one MCQ will be asked, one mark and one five mark question will be asked therefore totally six mark respiration in plants again totally six mark wherein one five mark question and one mcq will be asked totally six marks plant growth and development it is also highest one of the chapters which a uh, lot of marks question will come that is one mcq will be asked then one short answer that is for two mark and one long answer that is for five mark will be asked Moving further, breathing and exchange of gases, total 6 mark, wherein 1 MCQ, 1 3 mark and 1 2 mark will be asked. Next, from body fluids and circulation, 1 MCQ and 1 5 mark question will be asked. So, therefore, totally it is for 6 mark. Excretory products and their elimination, again 1 MCQ, 1 long answer will be asked. And locomotion and movement, again here, one two mark and one five mark can be asked. Again, in neural control and coordination, here, one two mark question will be asked and one three mark question can be asked. And for chemical control and coordination, MCQs, three MCQ questions will come from chemical control and coordination and one five mark question is asked. So, this is how the question paper will be set according to the weightage that is given for each chapter and you have to be very smart enough to study well because simply blindly studying without looking into the blueprint is of no use. So, concentrate on the blueprint. So, this is how the model question paper will looks or your final exam question paper will look wherein it will carry general instructions, read the instructions properly wherever diagrams are needed label diagrams you need to draw and as i told you they are div divided into part a part b part c and part d so this is how the question paper and part d section 1 and section 2 so let's solve these questions so in this session as i told you part a and part b we will solve and in the next session that is session 2 part c and part d questions will be solved so, the first main under part A, select the correct alternatives from the choices given below. That is 15 MCQ questions are there under this, each carrying one mark. So, the current sequence in fungal sexual cycle is, so fungal sexual cycle, there are three steps that are involved, right? First one actually is plasmogamy. 
then second step comes karyogamy wherein fusion of nucleus will take place after the fu fusion of nucleus the meiosis will occur so which is a correct step you have to see it is first plasmogamy karyogamy and meiosis option c is the right answer next question 2 so two statements are given you have to see which one is correct which one is wrong or whether both are correct or whether both are wrong so statement 1 life cycle of fucus is haplontic statement 2 in funaria there is a alternation of haploid gametophytic generation with diploid sporophytic generation so the answer both statement 1 and statement 2 are correct both statement 1 and statement 2 are incorrect statement 1 is correct and statement 2 is incorrect statement 1 is incorrect and statement 2 is incorrect the right answer for this is option d wherein statement 1 is incorrect correct because fucus they do not exhibit haplontic life cycle it is diplontic and statement 2 is correct wherein in funaria which is a moss there is alternation of haploid gametophytic generation with that of the diploid sporophytic generation because haplontic cycle is the life cycle that inter intermediates between haplontic and diplontic that that is why here option d statement 1 is incorrect and statement 2 is Correct. Next question. One of the following is a mismatch. So they have given uh, four matches here, which is a mismatch. You have to see. So pink tada. So that is they have given the local name along with the scientific name. Pink tada is cuttlefish. Aplysia is sea hare. Pila is apple snail. Loligo is squid. So pink tada is not cuttlefish. Pink tada. So the, the common name for pink tada is not cuttlefish. Therefore, option A is the right answer here. Next, the ovary is said to be inferior in guava and coconut. Inferior means it is epigynous ovary. So is it guava and coconut, cucumber and coconut, cucumber and ray florets of sunflower, ray florets of sunflower and coconut. It is cucumber and ray florets of sunflower in which the ovary is epigynous or it is inferior. Option C. Next, endoderm is pericycle and pith are absent. In which one? That is what you have to find out. Stem of dicots, root of dicots, stem of monocots, root of monocots. It is stem of monocots because in stem of monocots, they do not have endoderm is pericycle and pith, but they have a large mass of parenchymatous cells in which the ground tissue, in which the vascular bundles are distributed, wherein the vascular bundles towards the periphery will be larger in size and or smaller in size and towards the middle wherein the vascular bundles are distributed in a haphazard manner. So, it is stem of monocord, the endoderm is pericycle and pitta absent. Next, sixth question. How many of the following properties are related to lysosomes? So, they have given a number of properties. Membrane bound vesicles formed in the RER contain hydrolytic enzymes act at alkaline pH or act in alkaline pH capable of digesting proteins. So, how many they have given here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, 5. Out of the 5 statements or properties of lysosomes that are given, are all the 5 correct or are 4 correct or 3 or 2? We have to find out. So, the right option here is option 4 because Membrane bound vesicles, yes, lysosomes are membrane bound vesicles. And next one, lysosomes, they contain hydrolytic enzymes in them. And lysosomes act or they start secreting these enzymes at a particular alkaline pH or they start their function at a particular alkaline pH. And lysosomes are capable of digesting proteins because they tend to engulf the dead cells. But one property here, they are formed in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The statement lysosomes are not formed in the rough endoplasmic reticulum, but some of the enzymes that are needed for the functioning of the ly lysosomes are formed in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So therefore, this statement we will not consider. We will consider only the four, only four statements. So option B is the right answer. Here it is option B. So, next question, which of the following is a heteropolymer? 
So is it polysaccharides, poly heteropolymer means they are made up of chains of different units or is it a polysaccharide, polypeptide, nucleotide, lipids. Not polysaccharide, nucleotide or lipids because all of these are made up of chains of single units, monomer units, right? Because polysaccharides, they are made up of the same sugar unit or nucleotides, they are made up of the same sugar unit again, deoxyribose sugar unit or ribose sugar unit. Or polypeptide, they are nothing but amino acids, proteins, which are made up of chains of different amino acids. So therefore, they are heteropolymer. So option B is the right answer here. Next, the centriole duplicates during the cell cycle. During which cell cycle is the question? Is it G1 phase, G2 phase, S phase or M phase? So the centriole duplicates during the S phase of the cell cycle. Next question, tetrad is made up of, the name itself says tetrad, meaning four. Therefore, therefore it will have how many chromosomes? Two hom homologous chromosomes, each with two chromatids. So, therefore, it is two homologous chromosomes, each with two chromatids. Option A is the right answer. Next here, a number of statements are given, which is incorrect is what we have to find out. Plant pigments can be separated through paper chromatography. Yes, there is a process called as play paper chromatography wherein you need to put the plant sap on it or the mixture that is whatever mixture you have you got after grinding the plant that you have to put it at a point and keep it in a solvent mixture. After some time you can see that the colors would have migrated and separated or the pigments would have migrated and separated. Next, so therefore option A, the statement is correct. Pigments have an ability only to absorb light. Pigments have an ability to absorb light. Apart from that, they have the ability to impart color to the plant also. So therefore, option B, it is wrong. Why? Because the function of the pigments is not only to absorb light, to give color to the plant as well. Color of leaves that we see is due to a single pigment. No, it is because of multiple types of pigments, be it chlorophyll A, B, carotene, xanthophyll, all these are responsible for the coloration in the plant. So therefore, these two statements are wrong. So therefore, select the incorrect statement. It is option B and C. That is statement B and C are wrong. Therefore, option D is the right answer here. Next question. Each steps of TCA cycle is labeled from A to F. Which among these is the substrate level phosphorylation? Phosphorylation means what? Addition of ATP. So where does addition of ATP take place? So that you have to remember. So where does the substrate level phosphorylation take place? It takes place in step D wherein succinyl-CoA gets converted into succinate. During this step what happens? GTP gets converted to GDP and at the same time there is conversion of or ATP or ADP. So it gets formed or phosphorylation will occur. So that occurs in uh, that is step D. So therefore answer D is the right answer here. Next question. With respect to pulmonary capacity, so you have studied about the respiration capacities and the pulmonary capacity. So in with respect to pulmonary capacities, IC is equal to, it is equal to total volume plus inspiratory reserve volume. So option B is the right answer here. That is inspiratory capacity or inspiration capacity is equal to total volume or tidal volume plus IRV that is inspiratory reserve volume. Next question. Choose the incorrect statement from the following. So a number of statements are given. Incorrect we have to choose. A thin muscular wall called the interatrial septum separates right and left atria. Yes, between the right and the left atria, there is a thin wall that separates both of these and it is called as the interatrial septum. So this statement is correct. A thick muscular wall called the interventricular septum separates the right and the left ventricle. Yes, between the right and the left ventricle also, there is a thick wall called, called as the interventricular septum which separates the both. So therefore, option B is also correct because the septum is there. Next C, the atrium and ventricles of the same side are also separated by a thick fibrous tissue called the atrioventricular wall. So atrioventricular wall 
Valve means opening. It has nothing to do with separating something. So, option C is incorrect here. Therefore, answer is option C. Next here, option D also, I'll just read it off. Each of the atrioventricular septa provided with the opening. I told you it has an opening, right? So, that is true. Wherein tricuspid valve and bicuspid valve that we studied. But the atrioventricular septa that is there, that or valve, sorry, valve that is there, that has got nothing to do with separating the chambers of the heart. So, therefore, option C is the right answer here. Next question. The peptide hormone produced from the juxtaglomerular cells or juxtaglomerular apparatus is renin, erythropoietin, renin and erythropoietin, renin and angiostensin. So, renin is produced by a endocrine gland. It has nothing to do with the juxtaglomerular apparatus. The juxtaglomerular apparatus actually produces erythropoietin. So, erythropoietin is the one. Next Question C, the neurosecretory cells of the hypothalamus that secretes hormones are called. There are a number of small oval shaped cells which are present in the hypothalamus region of the brain and that they are called as, those cells are called as the nuclei. So, option B is the right answer here. Next, we'll move on to the second main under part A, wherein some options are given. Out of the given options, you have to choose the right option for the for the five, fill in the blanks given. So, the first one, 16th question. The mode of arrangement of sepals or petals in floral bud with respect to other mem members of the same world is known as. What is this arrangement called? So, it's called aestivation. Aestivation is the right answer. Frogs have the ability to adopt to extreme heat by taking shelter in deep burrows and that is called as hibernation. Aestivation is winter sleep. Hibernation is summer sleep. So, here hibernation is the right answer. Next question. In oocytes of some vertebrates, which stage can last for months or years? It is diplotene stage that can last. That is in meiosis, the diplotene stage can last. Next, the ability of the plants to show different pathways in response to environment and phases of life to form different kinds of structures is termed as, it is termed as plasticity. Next question. Pineal gland secretes hormone that also has defense capability. That hormone is called as melatonin and this hormone is also apart from defense capab capability it, is de it decides the coloration. So, this is about part A that is main 1 and main 2 under part A. Next moving to part B here all the 2 marks questions come under part B wherein any 5 is the one that you need to answer out of the given set of questions. The question 1, this is analysis kind of question. Brinjal and potato belong to the same genus, which is a genus, it is solanum. But they are two different species. That is true, right? Because brinjal is solanum melongena. So, brinjal, the species of brinjal is solanum melongena. Whereas potato, it is solanum tuberosum. Now the question here is, brinjal and potato both belong to solanum, same genus, but their species is different. What defines them as separate species? Why didn't they put potato and brinjal under the same species? The main thing is, so brinjal and potato belongs to the same genus solanum, but to two different species is because Potato, it's a tuber, whereas brinjal isn't. That is also one of the answer that you can write. But brinjal isn't because potato is a ground vegetable, whereas brinjal is an aerial vegetable. Or potato is nothing but the stem. It is a modified stem, that is potato, whereas brinjal isn't. So, that is one of the main reason. So, next question. Explain the sexual dimorphism exhibited in frog. So, main you have to write what is the main differences between a male and a female frog which you can put so that you can say that this is a male frog and this is a female frog. So, male frogs usually they have vocal sacs and they have something called as a copulatory pad that is which is present on the first digit of their forelimb and these two that is vocal sac and copulatory pad both are absent in the female. So, you write two of these, you will get 
two marks one mark for mentioning this and one mark for mentioning this so next question name the types of ribosomes found in prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell with their subunits so eukaryotic ribosomes it is ats wherein they they are made up of a 60s and 40s subunit prokaryotic ribosome is a 70s wherein it is made up of 50s and 30s subunits so you it will carry if you write mention the uh, ribosome number you can or mention the size of the ribosome or mention what type of ribosome you'll get one mark half half mark each and here again one more mark that is half for this half for this totally two marks next differentiate a primary metabolite from a secondary metabolite giving an example now you have to write the differences here so therefore two columns primary metabolite and secondary metabolite primary metabolite it is directly involved in the growth of the plant and development secondary metabolite is not directly involved in the growth of the plant and the development but it is useful for human beings or you can also write primary metabolites are involved in physiological functions of the plant secondary metabolites are not involved in any physiological function in the plant so you write one point under this you will get one mark and you write the examples primary metabolites amino acid sugars are the examples secondary metabolites rubber spices gums all these are the examples for that you will get one mark totally two marks next question both growth and differentiation in higher plants are open comment on it so growth and development in higher plants is referred to as being open it is because various meristems having the capacity or meristematic cells having the capacity to continuously divide and produce new cells are present in different locations in these plant bodies therefore both growth and differentiation in higher plants are open that is how you need to comment so you'll get two marks for that next question the lungs are situated in the thoracic chamber which is anatomically a airtight chamber now we have to mention the different structures that are involved in the formation of the thoracic chamber that is what are the different structures present in the thoracic chamber is what you need to write there is vertebral column there sternum is there to which all the ribs are attached ribs is there diaphragm is there so each of this will carry half a mark therefore totally two marks so four structures you write you will get two marks next question describe the disorders tetany and muscular dystrophy tetany means rapid spasms in muscle due to low calcium ions in the body fluid muscular dystrophy means progressive degeneration of the skeletal muscle due to a genetic disorder so each of this will carry one mark each next question represent schematically the division of peripheral nervous system of humans so it's okay if you don't write this portion you have to write so much why because they have asked only for peripheral nervous system so peripheral nervous system is divided into autonomic nervous system and somatic nervous system autonomic nervous system is divided into sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system because they have asked schematically represent we have represented it in schematic way in the form of a flow chart so this is how you have to write it will fetch you two marks so this was about the session wherein we got to know how the blueprint looks how the model question paper has been set that is how the final exam question paper will also be set and also we discussed the or uh, solved the questions of part a and part b under this particular question paper so i hope you found the session useful so we shall meet again in the coming session wherein we'll discuss in session 2 the remaining parts that is part c and part d under this particular model question paper which carries three mark questions and five mark questions so see you in the next session thank you